has been set for April next year. We are continuing with our investigations to consolidate our case and to prepare for trial. There's been a lot of speculation about the trial date for the cases in Kenya. The trial date for the cases in Kenya were set by the judges taking into account the schedule of the the schedule of the judges taking into account the work and other cases that are ongoing but also in particular taking into account the need to give time for all the parties and in particular the defense to adequately prepare for their defense so that the trial can start the trial date has got nothing to do with the date of the elections in Kenya. The message from the Office of the Prosecutor is that the Office of the Prosecutor or the ICC in general has got nothing to do with who runs for elections in Kenya or who gets elected to office in Kenya. That is purely a matter for the people of Kenya and it is for them to decide. What the office, however, wants to make clear is that the cases in Kenya will not go away. The only end to the cases will come once the judges have made their final decisions on the, on the cases. We are here today to speak to the government, to interact with the government, as we have always done, to talk to them about the issues of cooperation. We have met with the Attorney General as well as the um, Cabinet Subcommittee on the ICC. We have discussed with them again the issues of cooperation. The government has reiterated and recommitted itself to continue to cooperate and work with the ICC. We have highlighted some of the outstanding requests and the government has undertaken to look into this request and to provide us with the required information as soon as practically possible. We have highlighted to the government the continuing issue that we have on the question of intimidation to witnesses. Both the ICC and the government agree that intimidation to witnesses, threats to witnesses, are a crime, both under Kenyan law as well as under ICC law. We have agreed with the government that we will work together to ensure that anyone, whoever it is, that threatens or uh, anyone that threatens witnesses will be brought to justice if the evidence indicates that there's anyone who is complicit in this um, uh, in this regard. Therefore, we have agreed that we'll work together to ensure that there shall not be any intimidation to witnesses. The work of the ICC in Kenya is intended to ensure that there cannot be any impunity for crimes. The history of how the ICC came to Kenya is well known, or if it is not, um, then perhaps we can clarify that. The ICC did not come to Kenya on its own. It came to, the, uh, it came to Kenya um, in the aftermath of the post-election violence, and it also came to Kenya after full consultation um, with the government and the people of Kenya, and the ICC intends to continue its work in Kenya until the cases themselves that we're currently dealing with uh, have been finalized. I want to take this moment also to plead to you as journalists, as people who are in contact with the public, to please accurately reflect and to accurately report on not only on what is going on at the ICC, but also in particular to correctly reflect and report on what I have said today. If there are any questions, if there's a need for clarity on anything that I've said, please seek that clarity and make sure that you accurately reflect and report 
on what I've said. I'll stop here for now and give you an opportunity to ask questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is, uh, my name is, uh, I don't know, Shane, yeah. uh, I wanted to know something to do with our, uh, the common cases. How long? I'll start again. My name is Aaron Ocheng from KTN. Uh, first question I wanted to know is how long will the Kenyan case take after the, the start of the trials? And um, are you going to retain the Kenyan suspects there? We cannot speculate on how long the cases will take. We have got four suspects and we have got to need evidence against each and every one of them. The defense will have the opportunity to rebut that evidence um, to the fullest extent and also to be able to call its own witnesses. So it is very difficult to speculate on how long the case is going to take. Currently, all the suspects are free. They are not in any way uh, under, um, under arrest. So the suspects will continue to be free as long as they continue coming to the trial and attending the trial. The requirement under the statute is that every suspect must attend the trial. So that is the expectation with regard to the suspect in this case. Yes, sir. My name is Dennis. Uh, in June last year, you spoke to the Standard newspaper and said, quote, we are not seeking cooperation from the government to protect ICC witnesses and do not intend to call it to protect our own witnesses. From your statement today, are you withdrawing that? I'm not withdrawing that. All I'm saying is that there are indications of people who are intimidating witnesses. What we are seeking the cooperation of the government on is to ensure that the people, whoever they are, who are intimidating witnesses or those perceived to be ICC witnesses, then those people should be brought to book. We will continue to protect our witnesses, um, but any threats to witnesses or any threats to those who are perceived to be ICC witnesses, we believe that this is a joint uh, responsibility of the ICC and the government of Kenya to make sure that uh, those people are brought to account. It is a crime under the law of Kenya to intimidate witnesses, and the Kenyan authorities and ICC will jointly deal with anyone who threatens witnesses. The judges are the custodians of the fairness of the process in the ICC. They are, they are the ultimate arbiters on whether the process is fair or not. And they make their decisions based on that. So if they grant a decision one way or the other, it is because they have considered all elements and they consider that it is uh, fair and it is fair for them to do that. Again, let me reiterate that with regard to the question of witness protection, Yes, indeed, our witnesses are outside. But of course, that does not mean that some people, some way or the other, uh, could be able to find out. And the threat to witnesses is not only to the witnesses, but it is to also to people who are perceived to be ICC witnesses, rightly or wrongly. The threats are also against the members, the family members of the people who are perceived to be ICC witnesses. And this is what we are talking about here. This is not the issue about the witness protection. It's not the issue about uh, the lack of protection for ICC witnesses. 
the witnesses themselves, they are safe. We're taking all the necessary measures to ensure their safety. But of course, the threats continue. And they will continue, uh, or maybe there will be even more threats as we approach uh, the trial date. So what we are saying here is that now those threats must stop and that anyone who is whose evidence or who we have evidence to indicate that they are threatening those witnesses, then the government of Kenya and us will work together to ensure that those people are brought to account. Mm -hmm. In regard to case number two, there is a book that has been uh, written in Kenya, I'm not sure you're aware of it, by an insider of the ODM, um, and, and uh, indicating that the highest threshold would be implicated on the Prime Minister himself. Uh, given that you say today's recent developments, the press conference was based on recent developments, what would be your take? The book is an interesting reading. I think uh, we are all reading it with interest. Uh, what will come out of it, uh, uh, whether it is going to form any part of our um, evidence or anything else, is something that I cannot comment on for now. Yes. Uh, in relation, I'm Judy Kaberi from Capital FM. Uh, in relation to witness protection, is the ICC pursuing any people who are, who are perceived to be threatening witnesses? Do you have any cases that you're investigating? Yes, there are cases that we are investigating at the moment. And in that regard, again, we've already received the cooperation of the government of Kenya. So we are collecting the evidence. And as I said, we will not hesitate. Once you've got enough evidence against these people, we will not hesitate to bring charges against them. The rest, what is called uh, an Article 70, uh, Article 70 proceedings under the statute, where anybody who uh, uh, interferes with witnesses or interferes uh, uh, with justice then can be brought to. So we are collecting evidence against these people and will be able to bring charges against them as soon as we have got enough evidence. Uh, my name is Mohammed from, <coughs> from Standard Group. When you say that you are investigating, the investigations are still underway, are you only investigating the four suspects that you have, or are you, would you be investigating any other person who so far has not, been, has not gone through the process at the ICC, or any other evidence that may come from anywhere else? Our focus is on the four. Our case in Kenya is on the four. We are not investigating any other suspect except the ones that are, except any, except uh, the charges that relate to the obstruction of justice under Article 70 for people who are threatened. For now, the cases in Kenya are for the four people. Just, just, just slide on that. There are two who have gone through the pre-trial process and uh, the charges were not confirmed. Mm -hmm. And the prosecutor, the previous prosecutor, what I'm saying that that our the focus of our investigation so far, the focus of our investigation now is to consolidate our case against the four because those are the people that are against whom we have got to prepare for trial. Whether we'll come back to the others or uh, to the other two in the future, that's something that is still uh, remains to be considered. We are now ready, we, are now, we now have to get ready to trial. The trial date has been set, therefore we have got to consolidate our case, we have got to prepare for trial. So the focus of our investigations now is on the fall. Yes. Uh, my name is Tom Odula from the Associated Press. And uh, I want to you to clarify, you say in a meeting with, gov with the government, you highlighted an outstanding request. Could you tell us which uh, of these requests? And when uh, is the ICC planning to prosecute Rwandan officials uh, for supporting rebel groups which uh, committing crimes against humanity in the Congo, including different Kagame? Um, I'm sorry I cannot get into the details of the uh, request that we are make that we, that are outstanding with the government of Kenya. That is really a matter between us and the government of Kenya. Um, with regard to Rwanda, our focus in our focus is on the investigations that we are undertaking in, some, in, in the um, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 
our focus is on the arrest of Bosco Mtaganda, who is um, uh, against whom an arrest warrant has already been issued. We have uh, we are not in any way looking at um, Rwanda. Um, in addition to that, Rwanda is not even a state party to the ICC, so we would have difficulty even uh, proceeding against Rwanda. So there are no plans now. We, there, there's, there's nothing on the text now, or on, there's nothing on the table now about Rwanda and the ICC. But concerning Rwanda, recently or earlier this week, it was reported that ICC had warned Kagame that he risked being charged. No, no, that was not the ICC. It was somebody else who was saying that that uh, that Rwanda risked being brought to the ICC. It was not that that uh, that, that quotation was cannot be attributed to the ICC. It was somebody else who was saying that uh, Rwanda risks being um, risks being uh, prosecuted by the ICC for what they are allegedly doing. We don't know what is this, that, but it's not it is not the ICC that said that. It is something that is ongoing. It is something that we are taking a keen look at. Um, it is something that we are already investigating, actually, um, not only in Kenya, but elsewhere outside Kenya in other countries where social media is being used to threaten witnesses. So it's something that is um, under our radar. It's something that we'll continue to monitor, not only now, but throughout the, our investigations as well as throughout the trials. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, do you feel you are getting the necessary cooperation from the Kenyan government uh, in uh, whatever request you make? And um, as I've said, we have come a long way with the government of Kenya. In all our talks with the government of Kenya, we have never received a refusal on our request for cooperation. There's never been a refusal to our request for cooperation. Of course, there may have been delays. There may have been delays in the execution of uh, our requests. Uh, this is the thing that we are discussing with the government. But we have received undertakings, we have received commitments, and um, we have never received uh, a refusal to end of our request for cooperation with the government. Yes. Um, when you talk about consolidation of the two cases, in the local jurisdiction, uh, that's uh, the major of the cases. Is that, is that what? No, no, no. That is, that is not what right, I right, meant. I meant we are um, consolidating each of the cases. We are trying to bring all the evidence together in each of the cases for each of the suspects um, individually so that we can be able now to prepare for trial. I did not mean that we are measuring the cases. We are not measuring the cases at all. All we are doing now is that uh, we are consolidating what we have collected in the past with what we have now collected with the new evidence that we have so that we can put together a case as, we, as the date for the trial advances and we get closer to the trial date. On the same question of uh, cooperation, do you, expect, do, you, do you expect to receive the same cooperation once uh, some of the suspects are running for office if they, if they, if they become the president and form the, the, the next government? Cooperation is not predicated on whether anyone is indicted or, or not. That is not the condition. That's, that's not a precondition. Cooperation is unconditional. And Kenya, not only as a state party, uh, but also as a country that has committed itself to cooperating with the ICC is under an obligation to cooperate with us from the start of the investigations till the conclusion of our trials. Presently, African Union has a uh, meeting at Addis Ababa resolved that they are going to lobby to have all African cases being tried at the ICC reverted back to Africa. Is that going likely? Is that going to happen? Well, you can ask the African Union that. I don't know. Uh, what I can tell you is that um, there's a process for taking out cases out of the ICC. Do not just go and tell the ICC that we want these cases. There's a process, there's a legal process under the statute uh, through which 
everyone must go if you want to take a case out of uh, from the ICC. So if the African Union or whoever wants to take the case out of the ICC uh, meets the criteria or satisfies the criteria under the statute that is required for them to be able to deal with the case that ICC is, de is dealing with them, that will happen. But I cannot speculate on that, really. It will depend on what anyone that wants to take out the cases, that wants to take the cases from ICC, uh, what those people have to bring to the judges. Ultimately, it will be for the judges to decide whether the criteria under the statute and under the rules of procedure and evidence of the court are met for taking out the cases from the ICC. Uh, recently, the prosecutor indicated that, uh, or made a request to the judges on the regards, uh, to give notice to the accused uh, that uh, she wants to, to characterize their, the facts in their cases. Uh, probably, what is the rationale behind this? Of course, a case, as a case develops, and as you move along in the cases, you look at, um, you look at it in fre with fresh eyes all the time. The idea behind that now is to see, now to see whether you can recharacterize the facts, or you can recharacterize the facts and the legal basis for proceeding on this, uh, on, on this end. It is something that uh, the Office of the Prosecutor uh, has thought that it should, it should do. It is something that it gave notice to the judge that it was going to, it is intending to do. And it's something that the Office of the Prosecutor uh, will, uh, will in fact do. Of course, again, that should be without prejudice to whatever position the defense takes as well. It be something that is going to be put to the, to the, to the judges. The defense will have uh, the opportunity to argue against it, and it will be up to the judges to decide whether to grant it or not. You said that uh, the date of the trial wasn't set uh, taken into account the Kenyan elections. How do you think it could affect them, and uh, what if uh, some of the suspects uh, are elected? Thank you. As I said, the case, the case against the suspects will not go away. Irrespective of the outcome of the elections and respective of whatever happens, the case against the suspects will not go away. Uh, what the impact it will have on the, um, on the politics of Kenya is really something that I, I am not uh, able to comment upon. Uh, political analysts or whoever else, uh, can be able to do that. Um, the ICC process is a judicial process. It's a legal process. It's not a political process. It does not take into account political considerations. It is purely legal. It is based on the statute. It is based on the rules of procedure and evidence. And that is what is going to follow. Uh, what would you say about claims that uh, intermediaries are being used to front uh, uh, false witnesses, especially uh, for those opposed to the four who have a case to us? Um, I mean, the issue of intermediaries arose in the case of uh, arose in the case of um, in the case of of Lubanga, and that issue has been dealt with. Uh, who intermediaries are and what their role is and how they should be used. That legal issue has been clarified by the by the judges. So, if there are intermediaries, if there are intermediaries on which uh, I am not going to comment now, if there are intermediaries that are being used in Kenya, they are being used in accordance with the guidelines as well as um, um, with the prescriptions that have been laid down in the previous cases that have already that have that have already dealt with the issue. Yes sir. Hi there, James Vinal DPA. Back on the Kenya cases, um, witness intimidation, how many cases of intimidation are you investigating? Do they relate to one of the cases or both of the cases? And have any of the four suspects been implicated in intimidating witnesses? Um, you are asking me now really to go into the, provide you with the details of the evidence and everything else, uh, which I would not be able to do in this forum, because this is, this is an issue that is still under investigation. As I say, our investigations on this are ongoing. And the numbers, they are good enough to warrant an investigation, because it's not a question of the numbers. It is really a question that now um, intimidation of witnesses, threat to witnesses in, in itself, should not be allowed. Whether it is one complaint, whether it's two complaints, or whether many complaints, that in itself as a principle is something that should not be allowed. Um, as I'm saying, our investigations are continuing, uh, and as soon as we have collected enough evidence to indicate who is implicated in this, then we'll bring the charges, and the charges will be public. Everybody will know.
who is implicated in this. Are they in both cases? Yes, they're cut across. Does it go up to any of the suspects? No comment on that. Would you agree if one of the Kenya suspects turned out to be a prosecution witness? Sorry? Would you accept the offer if one of the Kenyan suspects agreed to be a prosecution witness against the others? If one of the Kenyan suspects agreed to be a prosecution witness against the others? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> We'd have to consider that on the merits. We'd have to consider that on the merits and see what. Uh, do we have any witnesses who have left the prosecution in Bank or opted out of uh, all the prosecution witnesses before and adopted out either before confirmation or before no, no, we haven't. Yes. So, legally speaking, sorry, my name is Yara from Reuters. So, legally speaking, if one of those four suspects should become president after the election, you would still have them, and, and, you, and you've charged them as guilty, and there's an arrest warrant, as in the case of uh, Mr. Bashir, for instance, of Sudan. Would we, could we find ourselves in a situation where, as long as he doesn't go anywhere where the, where the statute isn't recognized, he can still be president of Kenya? I have said that the question of who runs for elections in Kenya and who gets elected in Kenya, uh, that's a question for the Kenyan people. That's a matter for the Kenyan people. The ICS got nothing to do with that. But I will also say that uh, there's no immunity for crimes under the ICC statute. ICC statute is clear that whether you're head of state, whether you're a prime minister, whether you're a king, if there are crimes or if you are alleged to have committed the crimes, then there's no immunity against you. Uh, and that you will be investigated and prosecuted irrespective. If arrest warrants are issued against you, you will, be, you will face the same plight as anyone else that faces the charges against the ICC. So the question of whether you are a head of state or not does not matter for ICC, as there's no immunity for these crimes. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, when the, the, the suspects were in the trial or the pre trial, there were conditions set for them to be released. Uh, any of the suspects, uh, and we see them campaigning, in the, most of the time they keep reference to ICC. Is any of the suspects violated any of the conditions that were set before? Trust me, if any of the suspects violates any of the conditions, the judges are fully aware of the conditions that they have set. The suspects themselves are fully aware of the um, conditions that have been set. And if they violate any of those conditions, they know what will happen to them. They are being monitored. Everything is being done to look at what they are saying. So if in any, at any stage there are any indications or there's evidence that they have violated any of the conditions, then the matter will be brought to the judges. It will be for the judges to decide what to do. I'm saying that for anyone who wants to take the cases out of the ICC, there's a process. There are criteria that must be met for anyone to take the cases out of the ICC. Anyone who wants to take the case out of the ICC will have to present his or her case to the judges. The Office of the Prosecutor will be given an opportunity to make submissions in relation to uh, whatever that person is presenting before the judges. And it will be for the judges to decide whether or not the cases should go out or not. The mere creation to say we are just creating a court here and that court is going to that court is going to automatically take over the cases that is just a mere fiction that will not go have to happen if a court is created that is intended to take over the cases whoever wants to take over those cases then will then have to come to the ICC follow a process meet the criteria satisfy the criteria under the statute and the judges will decide whether or not the case should go out or not No, those are the issues that we discussed. We discussed issues of cooperation as well as the issues of um, um, threats to witnesses. 
We also discussed the possible uh, visit of the prosecutor to Kenya. How many witnesses? Um, no, I cannot give you the numbers. So all we're saying that, that there seems to be a problem with this issue, and it seems to be recurring uh, from time to time, and we want to deal with it once and for all. What kind of threats? Death threats? What do you um, we have to work on the dates. We have to work on the dates. We have got to go back to the Hague, uh, work on the see what the dates, what the dates, are, what the mutually convenient dates are for the government as well as for the uh, as well as for the prosecutor. Threats take a number of ways. Doesn't necessarily have to be death threats. But yeah, I don't want to say that. I cannot comment on that. Any more questions? Thank you very much for your presence here, and thank you very much for your questions.